Let's now come to look at the first example of science. First example, Alak. He's the one who created a human being from an Alaka. Well, remember, the prevailing thought of the time is that human beings are little tiny men inside of their mother and they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and pop out. That's what they thought. Here's a statement, though, 1,400 years ago saying that the creation of a human being starts out as a blood clot. Why would anybody say that? A blood clot. And not only that, but it's a blood clot that's clinging or hanging on like a refrigerator magnet. Wait a minute. And it's shaped like a leech. You know what a leech is, yeah? You know a blood-sucking leech? You know, like a New York lawyer. <laughs> Just want to see if you're still awake. <laughs> Under a microscope, what does, what does the fertilized egg, the zygote, what does it look like right after the sperm has fertilized the egg? Do you know? It looks kind of like a fat worm, sort of flat and kind of string. In fact, if it were black, it would be exactly a leech that you see in the Amazon River. No difference. Oh, and when it clings to the wall of the uterus, immediately it punctures the skin, that's the, the side of the, the area there, and then fastens itself, forms a blood clot, and begins living off of and drawing its life force from that. Exactly the description in the Quran. So the very first, first of revelation of Quran disproved all the theories of that time and only in recent years have people come to know the real truth of what that is because we never had the science and the capability until very recently with fiber optics to be able to go in and see exactly what it looks like. How? How could this be? Well, it gets better. Allah did not leave it alone on that. He also talked about, in other verses of the Quran, the egg itself. He talked about the sperm, and he discussed it in ways and used words that today, top embryologists of the world have agreed that we should use the Arabic terms because they're already there anyway, describing exactly what we didn't know. The word I used, zygot, Mudga, this is from Arabic. Now after it, the egg is fertilized, according to the Quran, then it attaches. How could you guess something like this at a time when people thought they were just little men in there? They didn't know. And as far as a child resembling one parent or the other, even today, they're just now confirming the hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu which tells us clearly that whichever of the two, the male or female, the mother or the father, is to have their fluid come first, then that's the one it will resemble. They're just now learning that today. 1400 years ago, we had that. You imagine this? Everything that's described in embryology in Quran has been researched again and again and again by so many scholars of this and so many of them have all agreed there's no way anybody could have come up with this even a hundred years ago. How about 1400? How about a man in the desert in a cave who didn't know how to read or write? Lucky guess? <laughs> That's not very scientific. It means you didn't want to believe something. When you have a real evidence looking you in the face and you go, yeah, but I don't want to believe that, what does that mean? But I want to stay on our subject.